Hey guys, welcome back to the Monolith versus Microservice project in Golang. We have done quite a bit. We have worked on our memory.go file in the previous video. And we're done with the repository products, application products, right, and price.go. And all of these things are coming together to, to help us create something great. So now what I'll do is I'll close off all the files because all the uh, main files we have worked on. Now it's time to work on these interfaces. So interfaces will have two folders, create a folder called private and create another folder called public. Okay. So the private folder has another folder called HTTP. Public folder has another folder called HTTP. And both will have a file called products.go. Okay. Now this private folder will also have another folder called intra process. And this products.go file We'll have a package called HTTP to begin with. And we'll import a few things. The first one that I need, because I, I'll be creating routes here, so I'll need net slash HTTP package. And all the others we'll import later on. Now the most important function here is add routes. And it's going to accept a couple of things and it's going to have a function definition. And here we'll have um, a value called resource, a variable called resource. And we have type products resource. And you'll say here repo. So what does this mean? So this products resource is something we have not defined yet. So we'll define it right now. We'll say products resource. It's a struct, struct which has repo. We've already worked on repo a little bit, right? Repo is out here in your infra, this memory. All of these are repo related functions. And in a domain, the repository is basically your repo, right? Which has save and buy ID. Everything to do related with memory, memory related operations. All of them are uh, routed through the repo interface. So repo has products underscore domain dot repository. Okay. Then you have an important thing here. So you'll say router dot get. Now router itself is not defined, right? So you'll have to define router here. So router is you're, you're getting chai router we're using chi chai or kai whatever you want to call it and or you want to call it chi you can call it chi as well and repo which is products domain dot repository the other thing that happens here is you say the route is slash products slash id So you're defining a get route and you have product slash ID. What does that mean? That means that this is a route for getting products by ID. And we'll be calling resource.get function. All right. So what does the resource.get mean? So resource is product resource. Resource is basically product resource, right? So that means there needs to be a function called get, which we are passing to this router, which will help us create this get route for products, uh, get each product by ID. And uh, this function needs to be created by us, the get function. Now the function is not, so get is not a function, it's, it's a method because we're accessing it like this resource.get, which is resource uh, in this case being the struct. So it's a struct method, right? So get is a struct method. 
that's clear to us so we'll say func products resource and then get now get accepts a couple of things right and then it has a definition so get will have w comma r w will have http dot response writer and r will basically have the request and then obviously it'll do a couple of things but before we get into that i'll have a function called price view from price now what does that mean that means that we have to define two structs um, for now at least what just one struct which is going to be called as price view struct okay so what is going to look like it's going to have cents going to have currency cents will be of type uint currency will be of type string So since we are working with JSON data here, because when you create a route, uh, we'll be working with that route using Postman or curl, right? And we'll be working using JSON. So now we have to inform Golang that, hey, uh, Golang, you, we know that you understand sense and currency, and we, we know that you know that's uint and string. But in JSON, when we send it using JSON, because you don't understand JSON on your own, uh, because Golang doesn't understand JSON on its own, right? So we'll have to tell it that in JSON, it's going to look like this, sense, with a small c. And string is going to look like this, currency. And here we'll say p price dot price and price view. And you'll return price view p dot cents p dot currency and here in your get function you have access to product resource product resource has access to the repo repo as you know or has a function called by id let me show it to you repository has by id and in our memory we have already defined by id it helps us to get data by id so this private http uh, folder has this file products.go which we're working on right now it has a route get by get product by id and we're creating a function to get product by id which basically is going to help us to get that product from using that id from our repository or our memory so we'll have p dot repo dot by id products domain dot id chai dot url param the url parameter is going to be r comma id so if you in case you've never used chai router before you can access uh, url parameters using chai dot url parameter right so you get access to the id and using this function, right, the repo function by id function, you'll get back that particular data that was stored in the, your memory, which has a particular id. So you'll capture that in a variable called product, and you can also handle error. So error is not equal to nil. Let's say that error is not equal to nil. We'll say render dot render w comma r comma common http dot enter so common http is something that we need to uh, check if we have created this error or not let's see so common http so yeah we already have the internal error, error internal so no problems everything will be fine now and you want to render and respond from this function w comma r comma you want to send back from this function a product view the product view will have string which will be product dot id 
comma product dot name comma product dot description and price view from price product dot price all right so this is your file products.co this is part of the HTTP folder and the package is called HTTP and all it's doing is it's uh, you you're registered your route basically your, your get products by ID route and it's calling this function called get which is a method so that's why we've said resource.get because it's a method of struct products resource and this helps you basically get a particular product with a particular ID from the database okay and this is the response that you send back render dot response so this was your entire uh, products.co file now this is where I'll end the video and we're doing little little in each video so that you're building up your knowledge and the project project even though it's big is not confusing you in the next video we'll work on this file the products.co file all right the one in public slash HTTP so it will be very similar to this file but there will be some differences of course so I'll see you in the next video